Euro 2024 is finally here. Over the next week, we'll be building up the tournament in Germany with a preview from each group. Today, we preview England's group, Group C. All right, let's get on to Group C now then. England, Harry, is this an exciting group? Is this going to be a good group? Yeah, I, I think so. You know, you've got two sides who haven't been here in a very long time. Uh, you've got a Denmark side who are very, very good and an England side who, who knows who are going to turn up. We could see... Like we did at the last Euros, England be absolutely phenomenal. We could see England play out like against the world, in the World Cup. Yeah. Who knows? The one thing that is for certain is Jordan Henderson won't be there. So that is a Devastated. very good thing. Let's start with Denmark then, as we always do, in alphabetical order. Denmark, a bit of a, an interesting one, this. Obviously, former Euros winners in 1992. I don't think they're in with the same shot this year. But they have been really good in recent history. If I take your minds back to the semi-finals in 2020, obviously England beat Denmark in there. But the fact Denmark got so far was a testament to what they managed to achieve that season. Yeah, and they've, they've always been... Uh, the, Denmark and Croatia sit quite similarly to me as those sides who aren't the greatest, aren't the big nations... But every tournament, every qualifiers, whatever it is, they challenge the big sides. They challenge the best. They always give everyone a good go. And as you say, semi-finalists in 2020, topped their qualifying group, which was a pretty nice group, to be fair, for the 2024 Euros. But as I say, they're a good side. On their day, they can give any team at this tournament a run for their money. And they're going to push England at the top of this group. Yeah, and it, let's talk about their manager then, Kasper Hulmund. I think he's a, a really highly regarded coach. He's been t tipped with a lot of Premier League roles, especially for what he's managed to do with this Denmark team. And I think he would be deserving of a, of a step up. He's done really, really well with this Danish national side. They were a team who, they've always been good Denmark. They've always had some really strong mm. players. And obviously, they've won the Euros before, so clearly. But the the early part of the 2010s was a bit meh for them and then in came Hulmund and they've been really strong over the last few years so there's definitely been a, a huge rise in performance of the Danish national side under Kasper Hulmund and for anyone that wants to really dive into how good they are there's a great video on the coach's voice where he sort of talks about his views and philosophies on football which I thought was really interesting but uh, I think Denmark they've definitely got potential to be the dark horses here and they shouldn't really have much bother getting out of the groups. Yeah, 100%. It is quite a nice group for them. And as I said, I wouldn't be surprised if they topped it, to be completely honest. But realistically, they'll probably find themselves in, in, in just behind England. But we'll get on to that in a minute. But yeah, Hoylund, a, a really, really good manager. I love his style, which just seems like he goes with whatever system he likes when he wakes up. Yeah. He, he wakes up and goes, oh, I fancy this formation and then just sticks with it for the day because, I mean, they used four different systems in the qualifiers, so they've got the ability to mix it up, which is brilliant for tournament football because you can catch a lot of teams off guard. So that that could be a big bonus for net debt for Netherlands for Denmark going into going into the tournament. Yeah, it's always good to have those options, that versatility, that yeah. flexibility. And let's talk about Rasmus Hoylund then, who I think is probably their key player. Seven goals in qualifying puts him fifth top in Euros qualifying uh, scorers. I think that's a really strong performance. I think he's a player who has struggled to adapt to life in the Premier League. But when he's in a situation where he's a bit more comfortable in this Danish national setup, where he's given a lot more responsibility as the goal scorer, he clearly does very, very well. Yeah, 100%. As you say, he, has, he hasn't had a great season, but he's done okay in the Premier League. And he has shown at times that he is a very capable goal scorer. He's a very he's a big, physical, tall striker. You cross it into him, he can edit home. You get him one-on-one, -on -one, he's got the composure to find the back of the net. He's a good striker, and when Denmark needs him, he should be able to find find the goals. He should be. Let's go on over to the tactics screen then. Now, we couldn't sit here and go through Denmark's 15 different iterations of what they're going to do. So I've mapped out a 3-5-2 because I think this is what they will likely go for. Of course, in goal, you've got Kasper Schmeichel. I think he will still start this tournament. The back three of Vestergaard, Christensen and Anderson. This is a big reason why I think they'll set up with a back three. So I don't really know who you drop out of those three. And that yeah. doesn't even include Victor Nelson, who's played a really good season at Galatasaray. So there are definitely options in there. Across the five, they've got Mailer and Christensen, really capable wing backs, and they'll be able to get forwards really well, but also contribute defensively. It's a strong midfield three of Delaney, Hoybier, and Christian Eriksen. Cool. I think they'll all start this tournament. Again, there's options in there because Victor Jensen will feel harsh not to be in there. But again, options in rotation are always good. And then a front two of Rasmus Hoylun 
and Paulson, Eunice Paulson. I think this will be really interesting because, again, you could, you know, that doesn't include Mikael Damsgaard, who's a really strong winger. Jesper Lindstrom, who, again, another really good wide player. I know there will be people who want to see those wingers, but I think this system would set Denmark up for success. Yeah, no, I really like it. I think it works very well. It's going to get wide. It's going to put a team, it's going to put balls in the box, put other teams under pressure and really cause some problems. Well, they shouldn't oh, lose an aerial challenge, should they, no, with, with Hoyloon no, and Paulson up front. Not. But I, so I think they'll go 3-5-2. I think this gives them a good chance of you know, progressing through the tournament. As I say, I think they've got a good shot of being those, that dark horse team, someone that can yeah. just somehow find a way into like the quarterfinals, semifinals, potentially. I think they, that will be really interesting to see what they do at this tournament. And again, they, as you said, it's not impossible they top this group England are beatable but let's move on to England then of course the highest position of second coming at last time up the runners up in the 2020 edition can England go one better this tournament I mean definitely They're, they are how we are capable of doing so you know it was heartbreak on home on home home toy words heartbreak on home soil last time in the Euros time to redeem ourselves it was this is a very good England side. I mean, it's one of the best national sides out there. It's one of the best teams in the world. You look at the quality of the squad, it's absolutely ridiculous. Unbeaten in qualifying, incredible record, yeah. incredible quality. And realistically, England should be going far in this tournament. Yeah, I still have my doubts. Obviously, the Nations League was a really poor showing. We lost to Hungary in that. We finished bottom of a group with Hungary, Germany and Italy in it. So that was very disappointing. But... Overall, I still think there's a lot of positives going into this tournament. You know, Gareth Southgate rocking some new threads. They look wonderful. Hopefully, the players can be as jazzy on the field as he's going to be on the sidelines because loving the card again. It's a relaxed environment. Yes, it does look like someone's nan. So yeah, I'm, that's and quite I feel relaxed when I'm with my nan. So there, there you go. go. It's going to work wonders. But Gareth, I don't care what you're wearing, mate. You, you do us well at tournaments. You get us far. Take us all the way this year. Do yeah. it. Do yeah. it. Hopefully. Hopefully England can go all the way. I expect this will likely be Southgate's last tournament. So that's something, isn't it? Obviously, an end of an era in a sense. It'll have been there uh, seven years at the end of this tournament. And, I'll, yeah, I'll be intrigued. Was he there 2016? 2016. Oh, yeah, yeah. After, after the Euros. Sorry, yeah. But, um, but, yeah, I'll be very intrigued to see... What happens with Southgate after this tournament? I don't think he'll stay on as England boss, even if we win it or lose it. I think either way, he'll either go out on a high or go out, you know, yeah, through the back door and forget about him. But I, I think there is a really good shot for England at this tournament. Let's talk key player. Now, we do this for every team. For England, we can list 100, but well, not literally, but you know what I mean. And I've picked out Phil Foden because personally, I think if England are going to make it, what makes the difference between this tournament and last tournament is whether Phil Foden actually bloody plays. Yeah. Because at the World Cup, I feel someone like Foden was, was what we missed desperately. I think at the last Euro, someone like Foden was what we missed desperately. Someone that's creative, someone that's dynamic, someone that will take players on and has a little bit of that magical spark about them. Now, I'm really intrigued to see how England line up, but Foden, for me, has to start. Premier League player of the season this season has been absolutely ridiculous in the Premier League. And if Southgate somehow finds a way to bench him, I will be furious. Yeah, 100%. He is in the form of his life. And, you know, he thoroughly deserves to start every minute of this tournament. He has, he can do it all. He can take people on. And, and you know, he's an incredible goal scorer. I mean, his, his ability to find goals out of nothing is exactly what we need. I think he scored, like, 13 goals from outside the box in the Premier League this season. Do that at tournaments. That's incredible. Because when you yeah. play those sides who are going to sit deep and you need to... Find something that's going to get you the breakthrough. If you've got a player like Phil Foden who can pick it up from 20, 25 yards out and curl it top corner, that is incredible. You know, yeah. and, you know he is an absolute, you know, he's a massive, massive threat to other teams. He can cause so many problems. And if we don't start him, that is a massive waste. Massive waste. Yeah, I completely agree. Let's talk tactics now. Again, this is not who I would play. This is not how I would set up. This is how we expect Gareth Southgate will set up. So it's a 4-2-3-1. Pickford obviously in goal. I think that makes sense, Pickford. Yeah. He's not great with the ball at his feet, but for international tournaments, you want someone... You don't, that's not so mm. important. And actually, his shot stop has been huge for us in recent seasons, so I don't see that changing. In the back four, Walker, Stones, Maguire and Shaw. Shaw's not played all season... But he was in the provisional squad, wasn't he? So yeah. will we see him start? What's happening there? I don't know. I don't know. I think... Because who else starts? Yeah. Chilwell's not been called up. Mitchell, was Mitchell called up? 
I think he was, but I don't think he'll get in the squad. I think they'll drop he, him. Well, he bloody should. So like, what then, Joe, Joe Gomez? Joe Gomez, our backup left back, go like we want or to go Or starting out. left back, because Shaw's not playing. Let me definitely so. go home. So no idea what's going on there. But I think that's probably how we'll line up, same as we did in the last tournament. In the pivot, I predict it'll be Declan Rice and Conor Gallagher. I don't see him starting Maynu. I think Maynu might get that third group game, but I don't think he'll start the tournament. I don't think Wharton will even be in the squad, unfortunately, which is a terrible call. Personally, I'd have had, I'd put Bellingham in the pivot. I know people yeah. love this idea that he's an attacking midfielder, and he has done well there for Real Madrid, but he's not. He is a box-to-box -box midfielder. He's always been really good at that role. So I would have him alongside Declan Rice, but they'll probably play Gallagher in there and get him just to run around a bit. And so then it'll be Bellingham in attacking midfield. Again, that does mean you've got to drop someone out of that attacking out of those attacking options but I think it'll probably be Palmer that gets axed so Foden on the left hand side Saka on the right hand side and Harry Kane leading the line it's it's odd because I think this is a really really strong side I'd still have Palmer in there for me and and just shift things around a bit play Foden attacking midfield I think he's more dangerous in that role or all right on the left I guess with Palmer attacking midfield either way that works so it's it's a weird one because I think they are it's really what it's it's an okay setup but it could be better and I don't think we utilise enough of, of the really talented footballers that England have. You know, Trent Alexander-Arnold, for example, doesn't look like he's going to start in this team. If he plays in the pivot, I think he'd really struggle in there. Yeah. But if you played him at right back, inverting into midfield, I think that'd be a really strong role for him. But Southgate just doesn't want to experiment. Well, so you, you lose, you lose Walker, and, and you know, I think Walker's a, a very, very useful tool with his pace and. You know, he helps yeah. you massively against, you know, because, like, if, if you come up against France or somebody else, it, he can deal with the likes of Mbappe, you know. So, it's a really hard one to be fair, you could even use Walker, though, as, as that yeah, right-sided yeah. centre-half or as a left-back. The problem is, every player gives you pros and cons. Exactly. Whoever he puts out there, it's going to be a strong team for England. They've just got to provide, got to play well. You have to get it right this year for England. Yeah. It feels like this year... Is the year semi-finals in 2018 in the World Cup, finalists in 2020. It, this year is England's. Year. It has quarterfinals, obviously, at the World Cup 2020. So it's not a constant progression. Yeah, that was yeah, that. I'm ravish. That mess. It was, in, it was in winter. Don't count. Oh, yeah, okay, fair enough. And um, <laughs> yeah, I'm very intrigued to see how it goes this tournament. I th I think England should be considered favourites. Yeah, we should. I, I think should. looking at the quality in this side, they should be on paper the best team at the tournament but I don't know you just never know what's going to happen with England do you and it no. feels like we could just throw it all away get groups <laughs> that'd be terrible let's move on to Serbia a team that have never qualified for the Euros which is weird because you think of Serbia obviously in such high regard but they haven't qualified since they were separated from Yugoslavia in 2006 so I guess yeah you would count that as, as Serbia never qualifying so I think that's quite an interesting thing Serbia's first tournament obviously they were at the World Cup last year so they they have major tournament experience and they are a really decent side manager Dragan Stoj Stojkovic has done really well with them I think yeah 100% and to be honest I'm quite surprised so I look at this side and they've got some really good quality Milenkovic, Kostic, uh, Milenkovic Savic, Mitrovic, Petrovic you know, Anyone with itch on their yeah, own name, get in the team. They're a really, really good team. and They've got some decent quality players and quite a strong core of individual quality. So for them to get to their first of the Euros, I'm quite surprised it's their first. But you have to congratulate them. They've done really, really well. They played quite well in qualifying. They were second in their group behind Hungary, I think. Um, but yeah, they played really, really well. And I'm intrigued to see what they can do at this tournament. It's going to be tough. They, it'll be between them and Slovenia battling out for that third place in the group, you'd feel. But I, I think they, they'll bat themselves to pick up some points here. Yeah, you talk about all the quality in there. Well, I think the pick of the bunch is Alexander Mitrovic. He had five goals in qualifying and he's been sensational this season. Obviously, playing his football now in the Saudi Pro League. He's been playing for Al-Hilal. He's got 32 goal contributions in 27 games with a 7.99 average rating. Now, of course... It's not a very strong and competitive league, but I, I still, think. he's put up some really, really strong numbers. And that form and confidence that we bring into this tournament could be really crucial. Yeah, and that is absolutely massive. Serbia are going to need goals. They're quite strong defensively. You know, Petrovic is a good goalkeeper, or Rakovic, depending on who's going to play. Milenko's or Petrovic, but I think it'll probably be yeah, uh, Van, yeah. Vanya. Oh, yeah, yeah. Vanya Milenkovic, Savic, I expect. I forgot him as well, yeah. No, yeah. I was thinking of the Rakovic or Petrovic, but Milenkovic Savic is in there as well, you know. 
three very good goalkeepers they've got there. Don't know what's happened um, to Dimitrovic. Don't know where he, I think he yeah. was their goalkeeper for the World Cup. Don't oh, know where no. he's gone. Uh, he could be there as well. Who knows? <laughs> they've but got they, loads of goalkeepers. Just play one well up front. But no, Mitrovic playing really, really well. And they're going to need him to find the back of the net if they want to try and get anything out of this tournament. Yeah. Look, look, let's look at how they might line up. Then I think it'll probably be a 3-4-3 three, for three, four Serbia. That seems to be how they've lined up in most of their qualification games. Again, they're a side that have mixed it up at times. In goal, as I say, I think it'll be Vanya Milen Milinkovic-Savic. Now, Petrovic has come in for the most recent friendlies. I think Rekovic had a game in there as well. But I think they'll go back to their trustworthy, very great bearded man so yeah. he'll go in between the sticks in the back three Babic, Velikovic and Milenkovic now we could see Gadelia Gadelj I always get his name right. wrong right. He could, we could see him dropping the centre half that's the role he's played for Sevilla this season but I expect he'll probably be in the pivot with Sasa Lukic as the wing backs it's Zivkovic and Kostic someone who we've not really spoken about but he could be really crucial at this tournament he's fallen off the face of the earth he's brilliant for Eintracht Frankfurt went to Juventus don't really know what's happened there and, uh, and but he's still a very, very good footballer. And then the front three, obviously, Sergei Milinkovic, Savic on one side, Tadic on the other. They'll be able to operate in wide areas, but also as a, you know, combine and, and link up with Mitrovic as the central, central striker. Now, obviously, no Luka Jovic in that side. So he'd be coming off the bench. No Vlahovic in that side. So he'd be coming off the bench. Two players you would really expect to start. So they might rework it from that. It could be a 3-5-2 where we see Milinkovic, Milinkovic yeah. Savic dropped him to midfield and then either Vlahovic or Jovic partnering Mitrovic up front. I said itch way too much, so let's move on. But that's how Serbia are likely going to line it. up. At Slovenia up next then, the final team in the group. And, well, they, they've only ever got to the group stage before, so they've already matched their greatest ever performance. It's their first major tournament since 2010. It's their first Euro since the turn of the millennium. So they've done really well actually I think yeah it's, 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 they've done, done really well and for a side that I don't think many would have expected to be here it was quite surprising when they did come out of the qualifiers second in their group behind Denmark and they actually to be fair you've got to give them credit they matched the Danes all the way and lost out on top spot on goal difference but yeah to be honest they, they've got a few players here and there in Sheshko and Oblak and a couple of others but they're not the highest quality team but it's that togetherness they work very very well and then that a very high individual quality can get them through in the games because I mean having a goal very good goalkeeper, very good striker is kind of the way to play football. Say, yeah. One stops everything and one scores everything. So it does really work. But again, it's about working together. You know, teams it to be honest, do I expect them to do much? Not really. There's a big lack of overall quality, but they're here, and that's what matters. And you have to give them credit where credit's due. They did well in the qualifiers, they deserve to be here. And who knows, they could upset the apple cart a bit. Yeah, let's talk about manager then, Matthias Keck. I don't know a whole lot about him. He came in in 2018. He's only ever coached in the... In like the... Asia and like I saw that. I saw a couple of places like that. He was like Al Etihad. I also yeah. saw he was in the Croatian League with Rijeka at one point. So he's bounced around various different jobs, but none in sort of the top or major European leagues. A lot of Eastern Europe, a lot of Asia, as you say. So... It's going to be interesting to see what he brings to this tournament. Obviously, he's been at Slovenia now a while, since 2018, so he's had he understands this squad. He's done really well taken from a team who looked not, like they were never going to qualify for a, mm. for a big tournament, or at least for a while. You know, when he came in, it had been eight years, and now he's transformed that. Within six years, they are here at the Euros. A lot of that is helped out by the fact that Benjamin Szczesko exists, but you've got to get lucky sometimes in international football. So, And, and credit to him for implementing him and bringing him into yeah. that first team setup because he is a fantastic player. Player. So let's talk about him. Key player, Benjamin Sheshko. Who else is it going to be? The FM Wonder Kid, the legend for amongst FM players. Five goals in qualifying was instrumental to getting them here. I believe that puts him 10th top goal scorer in the in the Euros qualifying. So, yeah, Sheshko, a really, really strong player. What impact could he have for Slovenia at this tournament? Yeah, I mean, he is going to be, he's going to be influential if Slovenia will do anything because it is going to be a case of every chance he gets, he's going to have to take it. But he's that kind of striker. He's a very precise and clinical player. He's going to take chances that he gets and he's going to need to. High pressure scenarios, you know, he, he'll, he might get one shot against England and he's got to try and find the back of the net with that. You know, that, that's the kind of situation that Slovenia are going to find themselves in. He's going to be a handful for defenders. He's not going to make it easy and he's going to put them under a lot of pressure and try and cause them problems. And when he does get the chances, he's going to test the goalkeeper. So... 
if Slovenia want to do anything, Sheshko is going to be the forefront of that. Yeah, the other thing that could be really nice to see, a nice heartwarming moment, is that Josip Ilicic might be back in the Slovenia setup. Obviously, we know he's struggled massively with his mental health over the last few years. He took a couple of years out of football. This season, he returned to playing, and he has been named in the provisional squad, at least, for Slovenia. So we may well see him at this Euros, which would, of course, be a really nice moment for him yeah. to come back in that manner. Um, Let's have a look, though, on the tactics screen, then, because very... Sam Allardyce, this formation. 4 4 2. Love, I love it. to see, isn't I it? I love it. I got love to see a 4 4 2. Have to say, I'm not too familiar with a lot of the players. Obviously, in goal, you've got Jan Oblak, very reliable goalkeeper. He's, you know, Atletico Madrid's goalkeeper for the last few seasons. I think he'll probably still be for the for the rest of time, seemingly. Yeah. Always been linked with a big move away, but has never really made that move. In the back four, it's Janza, Biol, Blazic, and Car Nicknick which I imagine is not how his name is pronounced, but that's how I want to pronounce it. I would imagine it's something like Carnich Nich or something like that. Yeah. But um, I quite like Karnik Nick, so I'm going to go with that throughout the tournament. Across the midfield of Thor, Lovric, Elsnik, Cheric and Stojanovic. Again, a lot of players who have played a lot of football across Eastern Europe. Not many players who've broken into those major European leagues or into those Western yeah. European leagues, which are a bit more affluent and have a bit more higher quality. But then in the front line, they have got Spora and Sheshko. Spora, I believe, played a little bit of in the Austrian Bundesliga, and also Benjamin Sheshko, everyone's well aware of his exploits. He came through the Red Bull Academy system. He was at FC Liefering, I think, for a bit. Then RB, Leipzig, RB Salzburg, and then RB Leipzig, of course. Your, your classic sort of progression. And with a £60 million release clause on him this summer, I think a lot of top clubs will be sniffing around him. Or oh, Sorry, I don't think it's a release clause. I think that's the valuation that yeah. uh, Leipzig have put on. And obviously that could go higher if he has a good Euro. So Maybe not so. only will Slovenia be cheering mm. on Slovenia... RB Leipzig's board of directors will be massively cheering on Slovenia because if Sheshko could put up some good numbers, they can charge £100 million for him. So I think it's a good team. I think it's going to rely massively on Sheshko. Yeah. But there is still a chance for Slovenia here. I think that England is probably a step ahead of them, you know, yeah. out of their reach. I think even if England's performance level drops to their minimum and Slovenia goes to their maximum, I still think they'd be fairly level. So I, I do... I do think that's slightly out of their reach, but I don't think a win against Serbia is out of their reach. I don't think a win against Denmark's out of their reach. So it's going to be very interesting to see. You would expect it would look something like England, Denmark, Serbia and Slovenia, yeah. but this is football. Anything could happen. England could get groups. Slovenia could win the whole thing. You never know. And I think it's going to be quite a good group. I think it's quite nice for England. As an England fan, I think it's quite a nice group and we should be able to get through it with relative ease. But um, never a foregone conclusion, is it? A European no, you group? never know what you're going to get with England, so who knows? <laughs> no, you don't. I did certainly didn't expect Southgate to rock off in a cardigan, but yeah. I'm very excited for it. So, yeah, Euros coming up. I'm very excited. I hope you've enjoyed our preview of Group C. If you haven't seen yesterday yet, go and check out on screen now our Group B preview. And look out tomorrow for more Group D coming. A very exciting group. Yes. And, of course, only a couple of days now till the tournament starts. I'm very, very excited. I hope you guys are as well. But that's everything from us today. Thank you guys very, very much for watching and we'll see you tomorrow. See ya.